There is a revival coming. Thank you, Lord. I feel your presence to the young people. Young, I'm not talking about teenagers. I'm talking about young people. And we're going to begin to call for them after he touches them. Come up here and begin to lay your hands and pray for these people. And we're going to see healings because the kids are praying. Somebody say amen. 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 It's going to be a powerful move of God. It's not, and here's what I want you to get to. He's been telling me this in my heart. It's not just us. It's going to break out all over. It's already starting. So I want you to just to get ready. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. He's going to begin to send people that need a touch from him. I, I believe there's a mighty outpouring of the Spirit getting ready. It's already happening, and we've, we've felt a little bit of it here, but it's going all across the world, and especially the United States right now. Whenever you see darkness, how many have seen darkness like we've never seen before in your life? That means that the glory of the Lord is going to shine brighter than ever before. It's the contrast, okay? So you have the darkness and the light of the Lord. Whenever you, how many go in to buy diamonds every day? No, just kidding. <laughs> when you go in to buy diamonds, what do they do? They sparkle, but they lay it on what? Black. Just like those chairs. It's the contrast that makes them sparkle. It's the contrast. It's the darkness going on in the world right now that everybody's going to say, I need what they have at Freedom Life. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And the Lord's going to begin to send people. And they're going to say, I just need a touch from the Lord. And they may come get healed and leave, and that's okay. We're not trying to get a big church, but I want big people. I want people full of faith that believe. Somebody say amen. 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 So I believe what the Lord is doing, this is what he's been putting in my heart, is he's preparing you to minister to the people that are coming. Look around. I want you to look at everybody here. There's some that aren't here today. This is the core group. Many of you have been with me for quite a while. You understand grace. You understand the power of God. He's preparing us to minister to people who have no clue, but they know that God's real. And a lot of people say, if I've seen this much evil, I know there has to be a God. And those people are coming here, and they're going to be ministered to by you. The number one thing we have to do is love them. What I want you to understand is people that wouldn't feel comfortable going to a very traditional church, they'll feel comfortable here because we just love them. Amen? Amen? You understand that? All right, let's get into the word. Go ahead and stay in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Look at the person next to you and tell them, I'm glad you're here today. All right, we'll see how much of this we can get through today. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, reach over, take somebody by the hand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your presence that's already here. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd just show up in power today. I pray, Lord, that you'd minister to each person in this room, each person that's watching online. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would come today in power like never before. I believe that as we get into the word, Lord, you've, you've told me that we're going to see healing as we get into the word, as the word is preached. And we've already experienced that in this room. But I believe it's going to go through the camera to the people watching online. And they're going to receive healing because the Holy Spirit is in the room with them. We thank you for that, Lord. Our faith is on 100, knowing that anything is possible. We love you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 You can be seated. Touch three people. Tell them, I wonder what God's going to do today. (laughs) Amen. All right, each week we take a a little bit of time together to prepare for what God's getting ready to do. He's already moving, he's already healing, he's setting people free, that's awesome. But I believe there's a lot more to come, amen? So how many want to see a great outpouring of the Spirit of God? Let me see your hand. All of us, all right. Part of that is to come to church expecting God to move. And I know it sounds cliche, I know it sounds churchy, come expecting, a lot of pastors say that. But there really is something to it. When we come expecting God to do something miraculous, we're already using our faith before we walk through the door. You understand that? Our time together on Sunday mornings ought to be the most exciting time of the week. Do you realize that we're in the room with the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead? That's awesome. Let's go one step further. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now living on the inside of the believer. 
He's on the inside. That's awesome. Let's give him praise for that. I'll, I want you to get that. He's on the inside and he wants out. A lot of Christians are happy with, I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven. If there's that much power on the inside, it ought to leak out. Somebody say amen. What's it doing? It's leaking out when we pray for the sick, when people are getting healed. Are you seeing it? All right, Ephesians 3.20. Look at your neighbor and say, this is going to be really good today. All right, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Now to him who is able to do, we're going to rip this verse apart. There's a lot in here, so we're going to start with this. Now to him who is able to do, who has the ability to do the work? God. I know you understand this, but the power, the healing, the miracles, they don't come from us, right? We all know that. God has the ability to do. Touch three people, tell them it's all about Jesus. Now to him, capital H, to God who is able to do. He has the ability to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. And I want you to see this. Paul says, our God has the, abil uh, the ability to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we might ask or think. And we'll get to the exceedingly abundantly in just a moment. But I want to focus on the asking and thinking. Could it be that Christians, that followers of Christ, could it be that we're thinking too small? Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. If that's for me, tell them I'm working. I'm kidding, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Whoever, I'm teasing you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Let's back up and read this again. God's saying this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is telling us, He's saying your thoughts are down here on earth, but my thinking, my thoughts for you are so much higher than our thinking that they're as far as the heaven is from the earth. God says, I'm thinking up here in the heavens, but your thinking is down here on earth. Does that make sense? I want you to get this. So how do we begin to think on his level? We have to have the renewed mind. What is the renewed mind? The mind of Christ. All right, back to Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that works in us. So wherever our thinking stops, God says, that's where I begin to go to work. I'm going to go above all that you ask or you even think. And I want you to say this. Say, Lord, expand my thinking. Lord, expand my thinking. In the days that we're living in, we can't afford to have earthly, fleshly thinking. We have to have the mind of Christ. Amen? I hope you see what God is doing here at Freedom. Earthly thinking says, I don't know if he can heal cancer. I don't know if, if you can survive a six-pound tumor coming out of your chest that was on your lungs. I don't know if he can heal people without prayer. I don't know if he can heal people without the laying on of hands. We've seen that happen, right? But as we're seeing him work miracles, our thinking can't remain where it was. I want you to touch seven. Go ahead and stand up. We're just gonna, you guys are kind of tired today. I'm going to have you loosen up. Go up to seven people, tell them, come up higher, 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 come up higher. I'm going to make you wake up this morning. Come up higher. Touch seven people. Come up higher. All right, you can be seated. You guys are so obedient. I'll just stand here all day. <laughs> It says, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And I believe God is calling us here freedom. Come up higher. With a renewed mind, you need to begin to think on heavenly terms just like he does. Does that make sense? He's not working in this church so that we can stay where we are. He expects us to grow, to move, to increase. The kingdom of God only knows increase. Now to him who is able to do, God does the work exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or you even think. So wherever your thinking stops, God says, that's where I begin to go to work. I'm going to go way beyond what you're even thinking. According to the power that works in us. Exceedingly abundantly. The word exceeding means to go beyond a stated or implied limit or boundary. And abundant means existing or available in large quantities, having plenty of. So God is letting us know that he's able to go beyond whatever limit or boundary has been set in our lives. And the goodness, the blessing, the miracle working power exists in large quantities, meaning he has plenty of whatever you need. 
He's saying, I'm able to go way beyond the limits and boundaries of your thinking, and I will never run out of resources. Somebody say amen. Amen. This is exactly how the renewed mind works. The renewed mind isn't bound by human limitations. The renewed mind believes the word of God more than the doctor's report. Believes the word of God more than the bank account. The renewed mind says, I serve a God of abundance, of overflow, of more than enough. Somebody say amen. amen. Now look at the next part. According to the power that works in us. So God is letting us know that there is a power on the inside that can work in us, but we have to let him work. I want you to think through this with me. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of the believer. How many know that's a lot of power? But look at what it says. According to the power that works in us. Every believer has the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, but not every believer has that power working inside of them. Are you with me? So I want to take a few moments and I want to talk about the power of God just for a few moments and we'll get back to this. Here's where I believe people make a big mistake. When God shows up differently than what they expect, they say that's not God. There have been revivals and outpourings where people laughed uncontrollably. How many have heard of that? Where they laughed uncontrollably and some people said that's not God. Some have, there have been mighty moves of total repentance, people literally running to the altar. Others have have been all worship, revivals of just all worship with very little preaching, and that offended people because you need to have the preaching of the word. And here's what we have to understand. When God moves mightily in a church, he doesn't have to check with the pastor or the leadership. (laughs) Somebody say amen. amen. I'm telling you these things to prepare you for what's coming. Our job is to be good stewards of his presence. I want you to say that. Say, I'm a good steward of his presence. The Lord's getting ready to do something powerful here. He's already begun. Here's the scary part. I don't know what it is. But I know it started. I can identify that it started. How many know that it started? So here's the mistake that we can oftentimes make, many churches make, is we look to the past and say there was a laughing revival, everybody laughed and got blessed. There was a weeping revival, everybody was weeping. There was shaking. So we look at all of those things, and if they don't show up, we say, well, that's not a move of God. But this is what the Lord put in my heart and in my spirit. Whatever he's going to do here is fresh, and we've never seen it before. So what we have to do is we have to identify and recognize his presence when he's in the room. Just like our worship. A lot of people, just a few minutes ago, a lot of people want to get real clamorous and boisterous with their worship. It was just like a blanket of peace fell in here. How many could feel that when we were talking about rest? That's something different. That's a little bit different. We just rest and you just close your eyes and just rest in his presence. Whatever he's getting ready to do is going to be something that we've never seen before. But we have to be able to recognize him when he shows up. That's why I believe he's he's taught us about his presence for years and years. Somebody say amen. Amen. So I want to show you something as we move forward, just speaking to you as the church. This is so important. As the spirit of the Lord, as the Holy Spirit is working in us, we have two parameters to keep in mind. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Let's read this together. Do not quench. All right, so I'm speaking to you today as your pastor. All right, I want you to get this. Let's read it together. Do not quench. All right, Ephesians 4.30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Let's read that top line. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I want you to say this. Say, I'm sealed. sealed. That means if you're saved, you're saved. The Holy Spirit has sealed you. Somebody say amen right there. That's that's a good place to say amen. I'll let you know. All right. So the Lord has given us two things to look out for as a church because we want to be a good steward of his presence, right? Number one, we don't want to do anything that would quench the Spirit of God. Number two, we don't want to do anything that would grieve him. To quench is to to stop the flow. And I've told you many times, it's like a garden hose. The water's flowing through it. To put a kink in that hose is to quench it. All right, we don't want to stop the flow of the Spirit. We don't want to do anything that stops the flow of what he's doing. I've seen God moving powerfully, and someone will say or do something to draw attention to themselves, and it stops the flow. You all know. I've been in the middle of a sentence, and boom, Something happens and everybody's attention goes over here. Not even talking. It can just be a simple distraction and we've lost everybody. Does that make sense? You know what that is? That's quenching the spirit. So we want to be very careful that we don't draw any attention to ourselves. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not about me. It's about me. Amen. We also, here's the issue. If somebody comes in here to get healed, 
I don't want to do anything that would distract from that or to be saved. I don't know what God's doing on somebody, in somebody's heart, and I'm going to get him go get my 15th cup of coffee. Are you with, are you with me? I'm not being mean. I'm just being your pastor today. Somebody say amen. I'll explain in just a minute. You're going to get in just a minute if you don't already. We don't want to do anything to grieve the heart of God. I don't want to do anything that would bring him sorrow. We don't have these problems. Somebody say amen. But this is part of being good stewards of his presence. How many of you have ever gone bowling with the bumpers in the lanes? How many need to? (laughs) I want you to see the two bumpers as grieving the Holy Spirit and quenching the Holy Spirit. As the church, as we move forward, we don't want to grieve and we don't want to quench his spirit. If we get off in any of those areas, we're in trouble. Does that make sense? So everything that we do as a church is with the spirit of God in mind. When God is moving powerfully, that's not the time to start talking to the person next to me about where I'm going to lunch. Right? You guys aren't doing this. I'm just, I'm telling you because God's going to begin to send new people and the church is going to grow. And what he's doing right now is building a firm foundation. We don't want to quench the spirit. We don't want to grieve the spirit. Somebody say amen. Amen. So we have to be good stewards of his presence. All right, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now let's take a closer look at that power. Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall what? Prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So awesome. So we know that our God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And this is so important. That power working in us is activated when you and I say what the Father is saying. What did Jesus model for us? He only said what he heard the Father say. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Our Heavenly Father is saying, just like the rain and snow give life and make the earth bring forth and produce life, that's exactly how my words are. He's saying, my words will not return to me without accomplishing what I send them forth to accomplish. We have to understand this with the renewed mind. If God has said something, whatever he has said comes with the power to perform itself. I want to look at this again, Luke one thirty seven. We looked at it last week, but I want you to really get this. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Let's read this together. For with God, the word nothing is two words, the word no and the word rhema. Rhema is the freshly spoken word of God. So this verse literally means, for with God, no freshly spoken word will be impossible. It will come with the power to perform itself. So how is God able to do above all that we ask or we would even think? How is this power activated and working in us? When we say what the Father is saying. I want you to get that. How is this power going to be activated that's living on the inside of us? When I say what the Father is saying. So this means that I have to know what the Father is saying about sickness and disease. I have to know what he's saying about salvation for my family. I have to know what he's saying about my finances. I have to know what he's saying about my marriage, about my ministry, career, my home, my future. In other words, I need to know the will of God. I need to read this so that I know what he's saying so now that I can release it. Does that make sense? I need to know the will of God. That way, when something comes up that goes against his will, now I know that I'm in a position to fight against it. If I know that it's not his will for someone to be sick, I am now positioned to come against that in the name of Jesus. And what do I do? I speak what he has said. I'm releasing power, releasing presence, the power that's working on the inside of me. Does that make sense? Look at your neighbor and say, this is good stuff today. You guys are quiet, but that's all right. I want you to get this. 
if I don't know that it's his will for me to be healed, then I may accept something that I was meant to reign over. That's why we're going through this. I told you last week that I had too much to share in one week, so I'm going to tie some of this together with what I shared last week. Psalms 107, verse 20, and Isaiah 55, 11. I think we have these on the screen at the same time. Then it should be the very next one. There it is. I put these together because I want you to see this. We're, we're called to speak the word of God. So what I'm doing, we all know that, but I'm showing you according to the word of God, where we're getting the power, where we're getting the authority. Psalm 107, verse 20, <clears throat> he sent his word and what? Healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. I gave you the wrong one. All right. Verse 11 says this, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. So he sent his word. Verse 11 says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. I want you to say this, the power is in his word. The power is in his word. It's what he's saying. You and I are just willing vessels. When we decree and declare what God has already said, the Holy Spirit shows up with the power to perform that word. And I want to show you just how important the gospel of grace is in knowing that we're totally forgiven. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. We've been looking at this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, all your sins, who heals all your diseases. Now which one is listed first, forgiveness of sins or healing? Forgiveness of sins. Now remember the lame man, the, the, his friends let him down through the roof, remember that? Mark 2, verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Now verses 10 and 11. <clears throat> but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. We have verse 12 on there, we may not. Okay, I'll read it for you. <laughs> Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went, went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. So he was healed. In both cases, we see the forgiveness of sins first. I want you to understand that. So this next part is for grace people. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. All right. Any grace people in the room? I'm going to begin to tie all this together. Hang with me. We're almost finished. <clears throat> Once you believe the gospel of grace and realize that forgiveness doesn't have anything to do with you, it's all about Jesus, and you're totally forgiven forever. How many believe that? Well, the Bible says once for all, Jesus took care of it once for all, forever. If you believe and understand grace, it is easier for you to believe and understand healing. I want you to get that in your heart. If you believe and understand grace, it is easier for you to believe and understand healing. So the Lord wants us to know that we're totally forgiven and then we can believe that we're totally healed. What was listed first? Forgiveness of sins and then the healing. If I can believe that he would save an old wicked sinner like me and make me righteous, I'm now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If he can do that, which sounds impossible, he can take care of cancer. Are you seeing it? Amen. <laughs> Eric says yes. <laughs> so the Lord wants us to know we're totally forgiven. If I believe that I'm falling out of relationship with God every time that I sin, if I believe that I'm losing my salvation until I confess every single sin, then I'm probably not going to have faith for miracles. Now do you see why the Lord dropped grace on us first and now miracles and healing showing up? Once you believe and you understand grace, it is easier for, easier for you to believe in healing. People that struggle with, am I really forgiven? I don't know if I'm really forgiven. I don't know. Their faith isn't ready to receive the healing many times. Are you with me? That's why the Lord is showing us this. And now we're understanding that the person coming forward is not even as much as their faith as I just believe. Lord, you're going to do this. Boom. That's why I told you he's preparing this church for the people he's about to send. Does that make sense? Because we're going to begin to minister to them. That's awesome. Let's give him praise this morning. <clears throat> Go ahead and stand. And we'll see what the Lord wants to do.
If you're here this morning or you're watching online and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, all you have to do is believe in your heart that he died on the cross, he rose from the grave. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. The Bible says you'll be saved. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. You don't even have to come to this church. You don't have to run down to the altar. I don't have to see tears in your eyes. You have to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Thank you, Lord. You will be saved. I just want to say this. I'm going to be bold for a minute. There are people who have been watching online, and we just want to invite you to be part of our family. Amen? There have been people who have been watching for weeks and weeks, some for months, and they haven't made the decision, do I want to come there? And you're welcome to come here. Amen? Let's put our hands together. Amen. God's doing something awesome. Thank you, Lord. What I feel in my spirit is he's, he has laid a foundation, and this morning he's letting you know the foundation that he laid in this church. And what I want you to understand, understand is you're stronger than you realize. You're more mature than you realize. God has been preparing you for what we're about to step, what we've already stepped into, but we're about to go out deeper into it. We're going to see some amazing things happen. He's been preparing you all along the way, getting you ready for something. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man of the things that God has prepared for them that love him. You can't even imagine what he's getting ready to do. Thank you, Lord. I believe he's bringing excitement back to the house of the Lord. People won't be dragging themselves in on Sunday morning. Oh, it's time to go to church. We can't wait to get to church because I wonder what God's going to do today. I wonder who he's going to heal. I wonder who's going to get saved. I wonder if there's going to be a seat for me. Some amazing things are coming. I keep hearing that and he just keeps confirming his word. He says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. Get ready. Some amazing things are about to happen. So... You can be seated just for a second. I'm going to talk to you real quick and then we'll. Something's going to happen with the kids that come here. This is, I'm going to share what the Lord's been, what he gives me permission to share with you. Is that all right? Something's going to happen with the children. We don't have teenagers yet, but the kids, he's going to begin to minister to them and you're going to see the Lord touch them, supernaturally touch them. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's, begin, he's put that in my spirit. So what we're going to do one of these days, when he, gives me, when he tells me to do it, I've had this in my heart for two or three weeks, we're going to bring them up here and we're just going to pray for them and see what he wants to do. Okay? They may just receive the prayer. Go ahead, give him praise. They may just receive the prayer and go back to whatever they're doing in the basement with their teacher. But when the Lord instructs me, it may be in the middle of worship, so I'm just preparing you as a church. We have to go with the flow. Look at your neighbors and say, go with the flow. Go with the flow. When God begins to move, when I hear that instruction in my heart, I'll say somebody, I'll call out a name, go get them, bring the kids up here because he's going to begin to minister to them. There is a revival coming. Thank you, Lord. I feel your presence to the young people. Young, I'm not talking about teenagers. I'm talking about young people. And we're going to begin to call for them after he touches them. Come up here and begin to lay your hands and pray for these people and we're going to see healings because the kids are praying. Somebody say amen. 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 It's going to be a powerful move of God. It's not, and here's what I want you to get to. He's been telling me this in my heart. It's not just us. It's going to break out all over. It's already starting. There is one church right now I I heard about a couple of weeks ago. 100% of the people they've prayed for have been healed. It's the only church I've heard of, but 100% of the people that come forward for healing get healed. That's something new. (laughs) That's a mighty outpouring of the Spirit. And I think, I, I've heard this over and over too that from people, I don't know if you believe in prophets, I do, but I've heard of prophets who have said, God says, I've had enough. It's my turn. And I have never seen, like we talked about, evil go to this side, like the pendulum swings, so much evil. God says, I've had enough, now we're taking it over to this side and I'm going to begin to move because Jesus is getting ready to come back. Somebody say amen. Yes. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. 
We're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. So what I want you to do is begin to get excited on the inside. The enemy is going to try to talk you out of it. He's going to discourage you. He's going to get you so busy you can't come to church. You're tired. You're worn out. You have to resist that and get into the Word of God. Turn on some worship music. Let God minister to you and get excited for Sunday morning. Can we do that? When we come in here expecting God to move, it's going to blow the roof off this place, I'm telling you. Amazing things are going to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready.